there's finally no one in the flat so I can be as weird as I like <laughs> um, but that is because it's a gorgeous day today um, and I should be outside but here I am um, I will go outside. Hello um, and welcome back to my channel um, my name is Miranda and today I'm bringing you the second installment in my series Vibes. <laughs> I guess we're running with that title now. Um, yes today I'm going to be talking to you about a load of books um, that have older protagonists and slash or intergenerational relationships. All these books are very different. Um, they technically don't have the same vibe, they just share a an element in common. I also love them all, um, so I hope you read some of them because they're great. Lots of the books I read, lots of the books that get published are about young people um, and it's nice to remember sometimes that old people have lives too and they have stories that are interesting and worth telling. Um, even if they're not like, you know, young people going off the rails and being glamorous and shit, like, don't always need that. The first book is one I absolutely love. Um, it is Hagseed by Margaret Atwood. Um, this I read quite a few years ago now, um, but I still love it. But that means that I don't remember the plot very well <laughs> because I have a shit memory. It's a retelling in the kind of um, Hogarth Shakespeare series that I think is published by Vintage. Um, it's a retelling of Shakespeare play, Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. So it follows the main character, um, Felix, who has been kind of removed from his job by his main rival, um, who has now replaced him as the kind of artistic director of this um, theatre festival, I think. Um, it's set in like modern day Canada. Um, and yeah, because of this, because he's been fired from his like dream job, um, and kind of ousted. Um, he retreats into like an isolated life but then he takes a job um, teaching theatre to prisoners um, and I think it's teaching theatre or teaching literature something like that. Teaching prisoners um, where he plans his revenge which will take the form of um, a production of The Tempest. So this book is really fun because the Shakespeare retelling element of it um, gets quite multi-layered so you have obviously there is a produ production of the tempest being put on in it but also um the main character felix is a kind of stand-in for um the main character for the tempest prospero it all gets quite kind of playful and fun in that sense but it's also very emotional um because felix is grieving his daughter miranda is it me no it's not me it's about loneliness and what loneliness can do to people um but also as someone who loves Shakespeare and loves The Tempest um it's just it's so much fun and kind of it's really yeah just fun being able to like pick out all the kind of similarities and everything but if you're not a Shakespeare fan um it's also great um because you know it has this real emotional depth to it um and yeah, I love it. I would really recommend it. I'm not sure how old Felix actually is. Um, I think he's kind of in his like 60s maybe. Um, yeah, which is why this video isn't books about elderly people. It's books with older protagonists as in like 50s, 60s ish up um, because there's quite a kind of variety. Anyway, next is another of my favourites, um, Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. Um, I'm sure lots of you have already read this already because it is very popular, um, especially after the world fell in love with Girl, Woman, Other last year and then the kind of one that seemed to sort of come after that for everyone, including myself, was Mr. Loverman. Um, however, if you haven't got to it yet, read it <laughs> because it's beautiful. This follows um, Barry who was born in Antigua um, and moved to London with his wife and kind of set up a family um, and a whole sort of dynasty of grandchildren in London. Um, however, he has been in a secret relationship with his friend um, Morris for the last 60 years um, and no one knows about it because it's secret. That's the nature of a secret. This book kind of follows from the point where his marriage seems to be at breaking point, finally, um, and he is faced with the choice of 
how he wants to spend the rest of his life and who with or with whom if I'm feeling fancy. What Bernadine Evaristo is so good at is creating real characters who are immensely flawed but also so endearing um, that you can't help but kind of get behind them um, and this book is like the epitome of that because um, Barry is kind of a dick <laughs> like he you know he, he hates his wife he's not like the best father or grandfather um, and he treats people around him badly but he's also really lovable in lots of ways um, and he just feels so real. I also loved reading about um, his wife Carmel um, who gets kind of chapters told um, in a sort of more slightly stream of consciousness style um, more similar to what um, the whole of Girl, Woman, Other is written in. Um, yeah all those sections were beautiful. I loved getting to see their relationship from like all of the angles. Um, yeah basically it's lovely, it's wonderful, it's really fun, it's very emotional but also very amusing and kind of light-hearted so love that. Next is another one that I read a while ago and I don't particularly remember very well but I'm just gonna mention it briefly um it's Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. It's about a woman called Maud who has dementia um and she believes her breast her, her breast she, no she believes her best friend has disappeared and gone missing um but no one believes her so she's trying to investigate herself um while everyone is kind of telling her that she's wrong um and also as this happens a sort of earlier mystery from um her younger life um is sort of unearthed at the same time from what i remember the reason this book was really cool to me was because the perspective is done really well um and because it's in first person you get like really into her head which is really cool um and interesting especially because she's like struggling with memory loss and isn't quite sure what's going on all the time um and has all these people around her who are kind of telling her that it's nothing and I enjoyed it um there you go <laughs> do with that what you will next is The Darkness by Ragnar Jonasson um I read this not that long ago um and really enjoyed it it's another thriller this is about um Hulda who is a detective in Iceland but she gets kind of forced into an early retirement but for her last two weeks at work she is kind of given permission to um reinvestigate a cold case she chooses the case of a young russian asylum seeker um who washes up in a cove um in a kind of really isolated place but the um investigation was dropped after um quite a short time and ruled as a suicide um but holder thinks that there's more going on this book is really fast paced um and you get um lots of intrigue um, regarding obviously what happened to the Russian woman um, and then also what happened in Hulda's past kind of mysteriousness of it what could be happening there <laughs> Hulda is an excellent character um, she's definitely the standout of this book um, she is a kind of morally grey woman in her 60s who makes a fuck ton of mistakes um, but really loves what she does and is really passionate um, and a great detective in the end. This book is ultimately about like um, multiple stories of women who are seen as disposable and kind of ignored and dismissed by um, the crowd of men that always seem to surround them um, and it's it's really fun, it's a really good thriller. It's translated from Icelandic, I can't remember who by but I will put it in the description because we love translators here and we appreciate them their work. Next is This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Malik um, which is about Bilal who is a British Muslim man um, who on his mother's deathbed is asked by her to build a mosque in um, the village that he lives in um, that he has spent a long time trying to integrate himself and his family into um, because it's a kind of very small English village um, yeah and this request for him to build a mosque um raises all kind of kinds of weird tensions in the village which were previously sort of simmering below the main characters are a fairly young family um but 
the reason that I'm including this is because of Bilal's aunt, who is a really interesting character. She moves into Bilal's family home at the beginning after having spent basically her whole life in Birmingham, um, after having since moving from Pakistan. So you see the kind of conflict in the village, partly from her point of view, which is really interesting. Um, and she's also just such a kind, generous, warm character. And I loved her. <laughs> I loved her so much. Yeah, this isn't a perfect book, um, but it's really enjoyable. And I would highly recommend the audiobook because it's a good one. Next is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. Um, Yoko Ogawa is one of my absolute favourite authors. Um, and this was the first book of hers that I read. Um, it's about a brilliant maths professor who only has um, an 80 minute short term memory. And basically this book follows the relationship between him and his housekeeper and her son um, and the kind of bond that they grow together around um, the very calm worlds of baseball and numbers, which are two things that I have absolutely zero interest in. Um, but I still love this book and what they came to mean within this book. This book is just lovely. It's it's so quiet and poignant, but also very kind of graceful. Um, and the relationships that are built within it um, are so lovely to read about. And I love it with my whole heart. Next is The Light Keeper's Daughters by Jean E. Penzewal. That's her name, right? Yes. This is a book that I have seen literally nowhere since I got it. Um, and since I read it, I mean, I read it since I got it, so that makes perfect sense. Never mind. Um, but I really enjoyed it, so I want more people to read it. This is about Elizabeth, who is in a care home and blind, um, but when her father's journals are discovered from the time when he was a lighthouse keeper, um, she inhis in inhists, enlists the help of um, Morgan, who is a teenager um, doing community service at the nursing home. We're getting there. Um, yeah, and to kind of find out more about her family history. This is a really well-constructed family mystery, um, which kept me up at night. Um, like I, I had to keep reading it late into the night um, to find out what happened. And the characters are wonderful. The development of the central relationship is really beautiful to read about. Um, and it's a really fun one. I really enjoyed it. Next is the only book that I have with me physically. Um, and also one that I included in my last Vibes bit video. It is The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. Um, I'm going to keep talking about this book because I really think it's great and I really loved it. This is about Vida Winter, who is an ageing um, author who has only ever told um, journalists lies about her life. Um, and then at the very end of her life, she kind of senses that she's going to die soon. Um, so she enlists the help of a young, low profile biographer to tell her life story. Um, so you get this dual timeline thing of her life, um, but also um, her, the process of her telling it to the biographer and how the biographer kind of feels about things in like the present day. This has got such an incredible atmosphere with loads of twists and turns and juicy family secrets. Um, but it's also very much about like aging and memory. Um, and I love it. It's great. Next is Gratitude by Delphine de Vegan. Um, another book that I've mentioned a few times recently on this channel because I really loved it. This is about Michka, um, who at the very beginning of the novel goes into a nursing home um, and the rest of the book just charts her struggle with um, retaining words. You don't leave her room for the whole book, um, but instead kind of learn more about um, her and her relationships with the two people that come to visit her, who are her speech therapist, and Marie, who is a young woman um, that Michka helped in the past. They both try and help Michka settle a debt that she has held for a very long time. It's very short with not much plot, um, but I like that. Um, and yeah, nothing really happens, but it's just about um, 
I mean, obviously gratitude, but also like the kind of dehumanization of old people. Lastly is The Gritter Man by Orlando Weeks. Um, this is another book that I have seen basically nowhere um, since I read it, which makes me very sad because it is incredibly beautiful. This is the story of a gritter man um, who goes out every night um, and does his job gritting the streets um, when everyone else is asleep, but he's facing the last day um, doing the job that he has always done. It's a very small story um, because it just focuses on him and his kind of reflections on loss and purpose and loneliness. It's really calming, it's beautifully illustrated, kind of in the style of um, The Snowman, um, and it is just perfect for a winter night. Um, it made me quite emotional, <laughs> I teared up at the end, um, but yeah it's it's gorgeous and I would really recommend it because I am very sad that I have seen it nowhere. So there you have it, a bunch of recommendations um, for books with older protagonists and slash or intergenerational relationships. Um, I said it right that time. Yeah, um, I really hope you pick up some of these books because I really enjoyed them all and they are lovely, lovely stories, mostly. I think they're all kind of lovely um, and a lot happier than ones that I would normally read, um, even though lots of them have death in them. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know if you pick any of these up or if, what you thought of them, if you have already read them, um, and I will see you very soon. Next is The Housekeeper and the Fresh... <laughs> I can't talk. Will there still be scary time? Something times. Tequila times. I've got the love.